Hello everybody, welcome back to Week of Life Wisdom. As so far, my new host is Zero Yeti. Let's go right into it. The first thing I will eat being the grizzly bear, or scientifically known as Ursus arctos horribilis, also known as the North American brown bear, or simply the grizzly, is a subspecies of the brown bear which once ranged from the Arctic Circle to southern Mexico, but is today only found throughout Alaska, western Canada, and the lower United States of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Here they inhabit a wide range of habitats, including taiga, deciduous woodland, temperate rainforest, grasslands, alpine, and coastal regions, feeding upon an even wider range of food, from berries, bark, nuts, seeds, tubers, and grasses, to eggs, fish, amphibians, small birds, rodents, various insects, especially armor, army cutworm moths, and scavenge carcasses, to larger prey in the form of young or infirm turkey, moose, elk, caribou, white-tailed deer, mule deer, bighorn sheep, bison, and even black bears. Averaging around 6 to 8 feet in length, 3 to 4 feet tall at the shoulder, male grizzlies are significantly heavier than females, weighing in around 500 to 900 pounds compared to females at 200 to 500. Grizzlies can be identified by its thick brown fur, large shoulder hump, straight snout, and rounded ears. They have strong front legs with long claws used for digging, hunting, and climbing. They are generally solitary species that only tend to associate with one another during the mating season or in times of high resource abundance, such as berry season or salmon spawning. After a four to six month pregnancy, the mother will give birth to one to four cubs during hibernation without waking. The bear cubs stay with their mother for two to three years, after which point they will leave and establish their own territory. Under ideal conditions, a grizzly bear may live upwards of 40 years. Next up is the Atlantic salmon, or scientifically known as Salmo salar, is a species of ray fin fish in the family Salmonidae that is native to the North Atlantic Ocean from as far north as Iceland and Greenland to Portugal and Connecticut in the south. Reaching upwards of three and a half feet in length, 75 pounds in weight, they are the third largest of the salmon family, behind the Siberian taimen and the Pacific Chinook salmon. The Atlantic salmon is an andromonous species, meaning that they can survive in both fresh and saltwater environments, typically dwelling in cold freshwater rivers for the first two to four years of their life, primarily feeding upon plankton and insects. When they are large enough, they smultify, changing camouflage from the stream-adapted, large, gray-spotted pattern to the sea-adapted, shiny side pattern. They also undergo some endocrinological changes to adapt to osmotic differences between fresh and salt water. It is at this point Atlantic salmon head towards the sea. However, some inland populations instead migrate to large lakes, spending the entirety of their lives in fresh water. Once in the sea or large lakes, they travel along the surface currents and feed upon plankton and other fish such as herring and capelet. As adults, these fish can sense the change in the Earth's magnetic field through the iron in their lateral line, which enables them to my navigate and migrate with ease. Atlantic salmon spawn from September to November, during which time the male's head elongates and a pronounced hook or Kype develops on the tip of the lower jaw. The female digs a nest called a reed along a gravel bottomed pool where she deposits 2,500 to 7,000 pale orange eggs, which the male will then fertilize before burying them. Unlike other salmon species, the Atlantic salmon do not regularly die immediately after spawning and typically will spend several weeks or several months resting in the river after mating before returning to the ocean. Under ideal conditions, an Atlantic salmon may live upwards of 10 years. Next up is the hooded potohi, or potohui, is a species of bird in the genus potohui that was long thought to be a member of the Whistler family Pachycephalidae, but is now known to belong to the Oriole family Orleodae. The hooded potohi is endemic to the islands of New Guinea and the nearby island of Yapen, where they inhabit rainforest, cloud forests, and mangrove swamps between 1,100 and 5,500 feet in elevation. A social bird, it lives in mid-sized family groups and 
frequently joins and even leads foraging flocks with other bird species, feeding upon fruit, grasses, seeds, beetles, spiders, caterpillars, earwigs, ants, and other bugs throughout all levels of the forest. Measuring between 8 and 9 inches in length and 2 to 3 ounces in weight, they are medium sized songbirds with rich chestnut and black plumage. Additionally, this species is one of the few known poisonous birds containing a range of bacteriotoxin compounds within its skin, feathers, and other tissues. These toxins, which are the same toxins utilized by poison dart frogs, are thought to be derived from their diet and function both to deter predators and protect this bird from parasites. The close resemblance of the species to other unrelated birds, known as the potohias, which are also poisonous, is an example of convergent evolution and malarian mimicry. Their appearance is also mimicked by unrelated non-poisonous species in a phenomenon known as Bavesian mimicry. The toxic nature of this bird is well known to local hunters to avoid it. The breeding season of this species lasts from October to February, during which time mothers will lay one to two creamy pink spotted eggs in a nest that is comprised primarily of a cup of vine tendrils lined with finer vines and other vegetation that is suspended on thin branches in the canopy. Uh, they are cooperative breeders, and several mated pairs within a family group nesting close to one are known nest close to one another and help each other to protect and raise one another's young. Next up is the green sea turtle, also known as the green turtle or the black sea turtle. It is a species of large sea turtle in the family Shelionidae and is the only except member of its genus Shelana. Uh, its range extends throughout tropical and subtropical seas worldwide with two distinct populations in the Atlantic and Indo-Pacific. Or they frequent inshore, bay, inshore bays, salt marshes, lagoons, and shoals with lush seagrass meadows. Green sea turtles start life as primarily carnivorous, feeding upon fish eggs, mollusks, jellyfish, and small invertebrates, such as worms, sponges, as well as algae and other and crustaceans. But as they become progressively more as they age, they become progressively more herbivorous, with the bulk of their diet coming from seagrass, algae, and other aquatic plants. Green sea turtles are themselves preyed upon by certain cetaceans and large sharks, in particular tiger sharks. Typically measuring three and a half to five feet in length and 150 to 400 pounds in weight. These reptiles sport a dorsal ventrally flattened body, a beaked head, a short neck, and paddle-like arms that are well adapted for swimming. The carapace coloration of the turtle changes over time, with hatchlings sporting a mostly black shell that transitions into a dark brown as they become juveniles, and finally into a spot or a marble olive brown as they are adults. The limbs are dark green or gray and sometimes flat black, and are usually lined with yellow bands. Green sea turtles migrate along long distances up to 1,600 1, miles from their feeding sites to reach their spawning grounds, typically along the beaches where they themselves were first hatched. Females usually make their this journey every two to four years, while males, on the other hand, do this every year. The mating seasons vary between populations, with those in the Caribbean nesting from June to September, those along South America nesting from March to June, those in the Indian Ocean nesting from July to December, and still others breed year-round. After mating in the water, female moves along the beach's high tide line, where she digs a hole 12 to 22 inches deep uh, with her hind flippers and deposits 85 to 200 eggs at a time, which she then buries before returning to the sea. After 50 to 78 days, the eggs hatch during the night, and the hatchlings instinctively head directly towards the water. This is the most dangerous time in a turtle's life, as they are targeted by a litany of predators, such as gulls, foxes, cats, and crabs. Juveniles spend three to five years in their, of their lives in the open ocean before settling in as still immature juveniles in their permanent shallow water lifestyles reaching sexual maturity around 20 years of age and living upwards of 80 years under ideal conditions. Next up is the white-tailed deer, also known as the white-tailed or the Virginia deer, is a medium-sized deer native to North, Central, and South America that has been introduced to New Zealand, the Greater Antilles, Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and the Czech Republic, Finland, France, Germany, Romania, and Serbia. These deer are journalists that can adapt to a wide variety of habitats, including deciduous woodland, temperate grassland, marshes, savannas, temperate and tropical rainforests, dry scrubland, alpine regions, and even mangrove swamps. 
Here are 11 herds of around 3 to 10 individuals feeding upon legumes, shoots, leaves, cacti, nuts, mushrooms, corn, fruit, forbs, and grasses. These deer are themselves preyed upon by canines, large cats, bears, crocodilians, large eagles, and anacondas. The white-tailed deer is a highly variable in size uh, depending on the environment they inhabit, uh, where the smallest individuals range from around uh, 3 feet tall at the shoulder and 100 pounds in weight in the Florida Keys, while the larger populations uh, in the Great Lakes and the Andes Mountain Range can measure upwards of 4 feet tall at the shoulder and 450 pounds in weight. The coat is reddish-brown in the spring and summer and turns into a gray-brown during the fall and winter. The deer can be recognized by the characteristic white underside to their tail, which it raises when it's alarmed to warn other members of the herd there is danger present. The white-tailed deer mate in November in the northern parts of their range and January or February in the southern parts of their range. After a six-month gestation period, the mother typically gives birth to one to three fawns, and the young can walk at birth and forage for food a couple of days later. They are weaned around eight to twelve weeks of age, but will remain with their mothers for one and a half to two years. Under ideal conditions, a white-tailed deer may live upwards of twenty years. Next up is the golden jellyfish, which are a species of jellyfish endemic to the Jellyfish Lake, which is a marine lake located on the island of Ilamak in the Republic of Palu, a nation in the western Pacific. It is most closely related to the spotted jellyfish, Mastigigas papua, that inhabit the coastal lagoons in and around the island, with both species deriving at least a large part of their nutrition from the symbiotic zoanthal algae that live in their tissues with the rest of their nutrition coming from captured zooplankton. Individuals typically measure 1 to 4 inches in length and 1 to 3 inches in diameter, with some rare individuals reaching upwards of 12 inches in length. Golden jellyfish are usually distinguished from spot jellyfish by their almost complete loss of spots on the exumbrella and the almost complete loss of their clubs and appendage attached to the oral arms that typically contain stinging tentacles. This evolution started millions of years ago when Jellyfish Lake became isolated, leading to the loss of most of their steam capabilities to focus on the cultivation of algae. This transformation led to them be getting to migrate and follow the sun in order to feed on the algae in question and thereby feed themselves. And our extinct animal, is Catilorhynchus, which is an extinct genus of large synapses that lived in the southern part of what is now North America during the early Permian period from around 283 to 268 million years ago. Catilorhynchus was a heavily built animal with a disproportionately small head and huge barrel-shaped body. While the smaller species C. romeri only grew to around 15 feet in length, the larger specimens C. hadoki reached upwards of 20 feet long making it one of the largest synapses of the Permian period and the largest known Cassiated plechiosaur. Their skulls sport distinctive temporal openings and unusually large nostril openings, which uh, could have been utilized for better breathing or may have had some sort of sensory or moisture-conserving organ. They also feature a large parental eye and an upper jaw that sport an overhanging row of iguana-like teeth to form a projecting rostrum. The skeletons are even more unusual, sporting a massive scapulocaracoid, stout, uh, as well as stout forearm bones and broad, robust hands that had large claws. Certain features of their hands indicate they were paddle-like in shape and structure, being used to swim and possibly dig in a manner similar to that of modern turtles. This idea is further supported by the fact that their limbs show considerable range of motion, which would have supported large muscles allowing for powerful movements. Catalorhynchus shows evidence indicating a diagram, diaphragm, but unlike modern animals, it was probably weak and necessitated support from other muscle groups. This deficiency is exacerbated by its aquatic habit, habits, uh, meaning that in life, Catalorhynchus would have spent a large part of its day dwelling in freshwater rivers, lakes, and wetlands, feeding upon aquatic plants while, emerged occasion while emerging occasionally to send themselves or browse upon terrestrial vegetation in a niche similar to that of modern-day hippos. And like modern-day hippos, Catalorhynchus would have relied on numbers and its sheer bulk to deter predators like the contemporary Dimetrodon. As always, take care of my guys, gals, non-binary.